Amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. You know, it's a privilege to be with us here another time. So, you know, just sharing a little word. You know, as we look into, you know, the scriptures. You know, tonight, I'm just sitting in for Elder Martin, and you know, as you know, he was talking about the power of the word. Very interesting. You know, topic that he's dealing with. And, you know, there is a lot of information that he gave us and much to learn. You know, and I would just like to chime in tonight and, you know, talk a little bit about the applying of the word, application of the word, you know, to our lives. And it's very important that as, you know, people of God, that we try to apply the word, you know, to our lives. So before we get any further, I just want to read a word of prayer, and then we, you know, get into the subject. Lord Jesus, we magnify your great and your matchless name. We give you glory. We give you honor. Lord Jesus, it's a privilege to live for you. Getting to know you makes my life worthwhile. You fill my emptiness with peace and happiness. We thank you tonight, God, for this, you know, word, for this session that we will have. We pray, God, that you bless every heart that's tuned in. Um, not just tonight, but even in the future, we pray, God, that the word will resonate, mighty God, that the word will marinate, Lord Jesus, and will accomplish that which you will. We pray, mighty God, that when all is said and done, that you be glorified. Bless each and every one tonight as we give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes, so, you know, as I said earlier on, that we want to, you know, just chime in on, you know, the topic that Elder is dealing with, you know, the power of the word. But, you know, specifically tonight, we want to look at the application of the word of God to our lives. You know, I would like us to look at our first scripture that is taken from the book of James, chapter 1, verse 22 through to 25. Yes. And we will read it. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any man be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgeteth what manner of man he was. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. You know, the Bible tells us in the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 3, 16 and 17, you know, the Bible says, for all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. You know, that the man of God may be thoroughly furnished unto all good works. You know, I believe that as we look at this passage in James, you know, I believe that the Lord inspired the Apostle James to, you know, write such a passage to have us to understand that there is a need for us to apply the word of God to our lives. Amen. We, as individuals, as people who desire God and desire relationship with God, the only way we are going to get you know, as much out of this relationship with God as possible is, you know, by applying the word of God. And this is how we know God. This is how we are going to get to know him, you know. And this is how we are going to know his character, his, his, his mercies that is extended toward us. It is through the passage. Right. So let us go to our slides. So, yes, we say all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and, and it's profitable, right? And the passage, you know, spoke about 
the person that is a doer of the word and another that is not a doer. And I want to point out here that, you know, as the Bible talks about, you know, the person that is a doer of the word, the Bible also said that the person is blessed, you know, if he is a doer of the word. And if the person that is a doer of the word, right, he applies the word to his life and there is a blessing in that, then what about the man that does not apply the word to God? Is that man blessed? You know, does, does, can that man look forward to the blessing of the individual that applies the word of God to his life? Again, there is a similar passage in the book of Psalms chapter 1. The Psalms chapter 1 echoes the same sentiment. And let us look at Psalms chapter 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, O glory, and in his law doeth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers, of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Again, the passage talks about two different people. One that has, one that is blessed because he delights, he meditates, he ponders, he think upon the word, he take the necessary steps to apply the word of God to his life. And the Bible again, so the New Testament passage that we read from in James spoke about a blessing for this man that applies the word. And then we jump over now into the book of Psalms chapter 1, right? And God again inspired the psalmist to write this passage. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. And the psalmist was also clear in pointing out that there is a blessing also for this man that applies the word of God, that meditate upon the word of God, right? So, you know, as we look at the application of scripture in our lives, you know, we, I would like to say that the person that meditates on God's law, as the psalmist said, or God's word, right, is like a fruitful tree planted near a stream, Meditate on, meditating on the Bible is a wonderful invitation from the Lord that not only encourage our hearts each day, but transform us from the inside out. And, and this is what we want. This is what we want to be transformed from the inside out. You know, a lot of persons might look on the outward appearance. I remember when, you know, Samuel went into the house of Jesse and they bring forth Eliab. And, you know, Samuel thought that this was it. But the Lord said, don't look at his outward appearance. Look at, you know, the heart. Uh, and because God is a heart God and he looks at the heart of the individual. So we want to meditate upon the word. We want to apply the word so that the change that God wants happens from the inside. And when it happens from the inside, it will come on the outside. And when it's on the outside, people will know what is happening on the inside. You know, I want us to know that a lot of folks, you know, are not aware that, you know, you can look on them, you know, based on how they attire, you can look on them based on their demeanor and know what is happening on the inside. You know, I mark you, sometimes folks will, you know, tend to, you know, make a, 
a little mistake, you know, and, you know, that's not what they really want, and they find the corner to repent, but you can analyze the, 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 the perpetual behavior, and you know what is happening on the inside, and you will look on, and you know that, you know, the person is far from God, right? So you want to apply the scripture, you want to meditate upon it. It's a wonderful invitation from God that encourages us, you know, and transform us from the inside. Often we, you know, focus much on Bible reading time, our quiet time, what should be specific time, you know, set apart for reading the Bible. However, we are just not supposed to, we, are, we don't retain scripture as we should, right? And this is what we really want, you know, the people of God to be retain the scriptures, you know, so that they can be transformed and eventually what is on the inside will come out. So the Bible, the passage that we read in Psalms chapter 1, can we go back to, to you know, you know the, the Bible says, the psalmist says, blessed is the man that walketh or that behave or that follow continually not in the counsel or the advice or the purpose of the ungodly. So what the psalmist is saying to us, that blessed is the man that does not behave a certain way, that does not follow the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand it in the way of sinners. You know, this passage, you know, as they talk about stand it in the way of sinners, you know, some, I heard somebody saying that, you know, when the Bible says stand it in the way of sinners, it means that you prevent them, you know, from coming, you know, to the Lord. But that is not what the Bible means. The context of the scripture that we're looking at is talking about the man that walks Godly walk according to the principles, the statutes, and the laws of God. So when the Bible said that does not stand in the way of sinners, you know what it is saying that this person does not stand as how the sinners stand. You, you, do, you do not operate like how the sinners operate, right? Nor seated in the seat of the scornful, right? The seat of the scornful it really refers here to those who ridicule, mock God by defiantly rejecting his laws. So the scriptures let us know that there is a blessing, like I said, Old Testament scriptures, New Testament scriptures tells us that there is a blessing for those who are willing to walk according to the principles, the precepts, right? The statutes of the Lord. Right? Verse 2. But his delight, his desire, is in the law of the Lord. The precepts and statute of the Lord. And in his law, do we meditate, do we think, do we study, do we imagine and ponder day and night. The Bible says whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. So the psalmist is saying to us that this man that meditate, him think, him study, him read, him ponder, day and night, that this man is a good man and that this man, there's a blessing upon the life of this man and that God will be with this man as he do, you know, his endeavors. And verse 3 said, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. Have you ever been to the river? I remember years ago in primary school, we used to school school. Don't want to say that, you know, but we used to, you know, excuse ourselves from school. We used to go by the river, and there, by the river there were some big trees. And, you know, it is because the tree is planted by the water. There was a, a mango tree we can remember. And this mango tree brought forth mangoes. And the reason is because the tree 
is planted by the water. The psalmist says that the man that, you know, ponders, the man that imagined, the man that studied, the man that think upon the word of God, he shall be like this tree that is planted by the water and he shall bring forth and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. When it comes to the word of God, some folks struggle to read it. We can go back to the, the slide. The second slide. Some folks struggle to read it. Some folks struggle to memorize it. But I believe that the biggest issue we have as people of God is application of the word of God or implementation of the word of God in our lives. And yes, we want to set, a time, um, set, a, set apart time to read the word of God. We want to set apart time to, you know, study, right? But the biggest thing is to implement and that is where we really want to get to you know as children of the lord our knowledge of god's word will only brings him honor when it is applied you can train a parrot to repeat bible verse you can train a parrot to talk but that will never change the parrot he will still be a parrot right some folks live their entire lives without really building up on the right foundation. When the floods came, spiritual structures crumble because folks will be hearers of the word. <coughs> Sorry. They will be hearers of the word, but they will not implement it. So when floods come in, when hurricanes come, their spiritual structure will be crumbled. Because they only hear the word, they never apply it. The truth is, of our spiritual character is not how we receive the Bible. It's not how we receive it when we read it. It's not how we receive it when we hear a word from the preacher. It's not how we receive it when we hear the word taught. But it's how we take what is read, take what is taught, and carefully apply it to our lives. Brothers and sisters, I want us to understand that applying the word, it is important if we are going to be the individuals that God wants us to be. If our life is going to be changed in the way that God wants it to be changed, then we have got to apply the word. I want us to know that if we fail to apply the scriptures to our life, the Bible becomes nothing more to us than a normal book. We just read, you know, some novel, some story book, you just read it, and, you know, it's a nice story, and you say, boy, you know, some of them is real life situation. But then, you don't want the Bible to be the same thing like a normal book. You want the Bible to be that which governs your life. You want the Bible to be that which you, that which guide your step. You want the Bible to be the way how you view the world. It, it's a world view. So, and you view the world from scriptures. Right? So this is how you, you want the Bible. You want to live the Bible, live the word. And, and, and know that we're not perfect. And we're going to get to that. But as much as possible, we want to be able to live the one the Bible to govern our life. So if we fail to apply the scriptures to our life, the Bible becomes nothing more to us than a normal book. And in <coughs> practical collection of manuscripts. That is why Paul said, whatever you have learned or received or heard of me 
in Philippians 4, verse 9, are seen in me. Put it into practice. And this is what I you know, want us to do tonight, to put the word of God in practice. And the God of peace, he said, right, will be with you. So again, you know, here Paul is saying to the Philippians, Philippians 4, verse 9. See if I can find that one. He's saying that if you do the things that he does, and you, you implement those things in your life, he's saying that the God of peace will be with you. All right, here we have it. He said, those things which I have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do, and the God of peace shall be with you. So, basically, all, almost all of the scriptures that we look at already, you know, that talks about living and applying the word of God to our life, is talking about God being with us, and is talking about being blessed. I put it to us, Bridging, that it is more profitable then to apply the word, allow, allow the word to govern our life, than to not adhere to the word. So Paul said to them, look here, whatever you learn, whatever you, whatever you see me do, whatever you practice, whatever you see me practice, put it, make note of it, and you do the same thing so that God himself will be with you. All right, so go back to the slide. So here are some things that we, you know, want to look at as we talk about applying the word of God to our lives. Applying the word of God, Virgin, is not as simple, you know, as we take it because you're, you, you have got to, first of all, be obedient to, you know, the spirit of God that is inside of you, the spirit of God that prompts you, you know, when you hear the word, when you read it, and, and this Holy Ghost is trying to get you to adjust, you know, you don't want to resist the Holy Ghost. So it is not really as easy as we take it because our will must be done away with and we become as individuals who want to accomplish only the will of God. So here are some things that we you know, can look at. Let us go to the next slide. Look at as it pertains to applying the word of God to our lives. So I, I, I just put it in four steps. Mark you, there might be individuals who will add more to these, but these are just four basic things, you know, that we can do to apply the word of God to our life. And the, the, the first one is reading. Then we have hide it in our hearts as Psalms 119, 11 verses. And then we need to study, and then we need to memorize it, you know, Elder had, has gone through, you know, studying and, you know, get into the ICGCs and the exegesis and all of that. And, but, you know, you want to study and you want to be able to memorize. You know, I know that a lot of time we, 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 we some of us, you know, we're not, we're memory is not so sharp. Um, but we must be able to quote a scripture, man. We must be able to say a scripture. What does a scripture mean to us? how it impacts us as individuals. And so the first step is to, to apply the word of God in our lives, is to reading, right? Reading the word of God. Reading the word of God does not mean that we do it to check a, to, to check a box. You know, a lot of time we tend to appease our conscience, our life conscience, you know, by just taking the Bible, reading a passage, and we say, yes, God, uh, you know, me read a passage, so, you know, me can't, I, I, sh I should not feel a way if, if somebody say, you know, you don't read the Bible. Yes, I took up the Bible and I read, and we just do it some of the time to check a box, and, you know, all of us at times are guilty of that. But reading the Bible is not, you know, about checking the box. You know, 
in reading the Bible, we want to learn about God's interaction with humanity. We can go to the next slide. We want to look at God's interaction with humanity. We want to get to know God. You see, if we are going to know what God expects of us, if we are going to know what God requires of us, if we are going to know what God wants of us, then the best way to do that is to read the word. What is it that God requires of me? How do I fall short? How do I match up compared to the word? So the best way to, to know the word, to apply it, is by reading the word to learn the ways of the Lord. At the end of the day, we want to be like Jesus. The songwriter says, just to be like Jesus. All I ask, Lord, is to be like him. So at the end of the day, we want to be like Jesus. The only way we are going to learn about Jesus, the only way we are going to know about him and to be like him is by reading the word of God. Our goal is to read, to get to know him, to learn his ways. Right? And to understand his purpose for this world and for his purpose for us as individual. In reading the Bible, we learn about God in God's interaction with humanity throughout history, his, his redemption plan, his promises, and his character. Through scriptures, we see what a Christian look like. The knowledge of God we glean from the scriptures serve us as an invaluable foundation for applying the Bible's principle for life so that we can be the person whom God wants us to be. Reading the word requires time. So I want us to know that a lot of time we, we feel as individuals to give our time to reading the word. Why? Because we are otherwise minded. Um, social media is one of the things that, you know, takes uh, up a lot of our time. And because we are scrolling, we tend to scroll for hours. And then we spend 15 minutes in prayer and, 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 and 15 minutes in reading the word, if so long, right? And we want to Give time because reading the word requires time. And we want to give our time to reading the word. This means that because it requires time, we are going to set apart time on a daily basis, which we are trying to, because I'm not going to tell you that you, you will be able to read, you know, every day, but at least try to set apart time on a daily basis to read the scriptures and to meditate upon it so that you know it can be applied right so the first thing that we we need to do as individuals amen bless the lord is to read the word right and the reading the word the goal about reading is to know more about jesus to know about more about what he requires of us as individuals so that you know we can get to please him if if, if, if our ways, if we can change our ways and get to please him, you know, that would be a good plus on our, our part, you know. This would be good in the eyes of the Lord that an individual, you know, set out to read the word so that he can know more about the Lord. So the next step <clears throat> that we need to do is hiding the word in our hearts, right? The Bible in Psalm 119, verse 11, right, says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you, right? And there is a reason the psalmist says why he hide the word of God. You see, you have to love God, you know. You have to love God and you have to be willing to do what God requires. And if you spend the time to read the word, it shows that you love him. 
But no, if you spend the time to hide the word in your heart, it shows where your heart is. It shows where your priority is. It shows that, you know, you really love God and it's not just, you know, a word of mouth. Right? So the psalmist says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And the, 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 like I said, the reason is because he does not want to sin against the Lord. And I put it to us as individuals, as, as saints of God. If we want to live the life that is holy and acceptable, if we want to walk the straight and narrow, then we have got to learn how to hide the words in our heart that we might not sin against him. Amen, somebody. So the second thing is hiding the word of God in our hearts. The next thing that we need to look at now is to study the word of God. The Bible said in 2 Timothy 2, verses 15, it says, Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The New Living Translation says, work hard so that you can present yourself to God and receive his approval. Be a good worker and one who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly explains the word of truth. You know, Ella sp spoke much about this. But to rightly divine is really a compound Greek and it, is, and it simply means to dissect or to expound correctly. You know, it is important then that as individuals who are to give an answer to every man who asks. This is what the Bible says, you know, to every man who asks, you should give an answer for the reason of the hope that you have with all meekness. So, you should be able to at least give an answer you know, why it is that, you know, you repent of your sins, you're baptized in Jesus' name, you're filled with the Holy Ghost, and you're trying to live holy. At least that we should be able to do. But in order to do that, we have got to study. If it's even the basic doctrine, as Christians, we should, be, we should know why we believe in this doctrine. While studying involves reading, reading is not the same as studying. So studying involves reading, but reading is not studying. So if you read the Bible, which is the first step, um, but you don't study it, you're still going to have a problem. To study God's word means that we are going to prayerfully devote our time and attention to acquiring advanced knowledge on a particular person, subject, theme, passage, or book of the Bible. So as, the, as you feel led, you know, as you feel, you know, let's say you, 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 you want to understand about tithing, tithing, right? You, 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 you look at the scriptures, you find the, 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 the subject, and you study, you know, what the Bible says about tithing, right? So this means that we will have to invest. This means that we have to invest in some resources we have to invest some of our resources to get some resources, right? It means that we have to, you know, buy some books, you know, including concordances. You know, Strong's is one of my favorite ones. Um, 
that it gives you both the Hebrew, it gives you the Greek of, of the word, of the different words. And then now, you know, you need to look at Bible dictionaries because Bible dictionaries now, you know, will help you with some of the, the happenings at that time. But then, you know, there are what we call Bible apps that can help us. Like, like, like this app that I love to use is the eSword. So sometimes instead of, you know, going for my, you know, concordance, you know, I, you know, just draw for the eSword because it gives me the, 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 the meaning of the word still, right? So I look at eSword or there is what you call the Logos, which is another, you know, app that you can use to, to study because we're talking about studying the word of God, you know. Now, I know that. Not everybody, because some folks might be saying, Brother Bailey, but, you know, I am not so techy or I am not so, you know, um, inclined to, you know, study this deep. You know, I, I kind of slow, I, I understand that. But like I said earlier on, that if it is at least for the doctrine, why is it that you believe what you believe? Can you... Persuade somebody. With what you believe. So we have to invest. We have to find ourselves invested in some of these resources. You know. Like I said, concordance, commentaries. You know, and some other books. Because, you know, seven brothers, seven different minds. And there are some folks who have... Uh, inspiration from God that will look at the scripture in a way that you know you did not see and you want to you know read some of the some of some authors and see what they have to say on certain topics you know on certain scriptures you know that is how you you you, you, you study that is what you try to do to get to be rounded you, you don't just read the scripture and then no, you say, yes, I get everything. You have to know, look into a lot of things. You know, there are a lot of resources available, including biblical commentaries. And, and you can just go online and you can just type in commentary on, on this passage. And they will give you, you will see a lot of commentary and you can read through. The thing though with that is that you have got to be per, so persuaded with the faith that you are in that you know how to eat the meat and throw away the bone, so to speak. Because there are a lot of commentaries and, you know, you want to make sure that you're looking at the right thing, right? Um, so, there are commentaries, yes, and you can look at them. You know, Bible studies that, Bible studies will enable us to feast on the meat of God, right? Let us find this scripture. Um, Hebrews 5, 12 to 14, right? Because I want us to know that as people of God, that when it comes, you know, time, brethren, we have to move from the milk, right? And we have to get, you know, to, to, the, to the meat, into the real meat of the matter, right? So in Hebrews 5, 12 to 14, he said, for when the time he ought to be teachers, he have need that want to teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as having need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them are of full age, even those who by reason of use of their senses exercise to discern both good and evil. So, it, 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 the, the, the apostle was saying here that if, if there comes a time when we pass the stage, right, of the milk and we now get into the meat of the matter, right? If you, if you use to everyone that uses milk is unskillful. So what we want to get at in a bridging is that we want to get skillful in the words, skillful in applying the words to our life because without studying, we will not get to know the word. We will not be able to apply it to our lives. So the resources are important.
important because we want to get the real meaning of the passage. The resources are important. You see, when we look at the scripture, brethren, we don't want to ICGs, right? We don't want to give our impression on what the scripture says. But we want to exegese. We, what we want to do now is to get the true intent and the true meaning of the scripture. You know, I had a conversation with somebody the other day. And how that person brings forth the understanding of certain scripture. You know, I'm, I amaze me because I've never heard anything like that. And, you know, even though you want to try and you know, help and correct. You know, there are some folks who are stubborn and they believe that, you know, based on how they see the scripture, that is it. But you, you want to be able to get from the scripture what the scripture is saying. You want to get the true intent of the scripture, which means back to the resources. You are going to have to know, know that when the scripture was written, there were certain cultures, there were certain practices of that day. When you read the passage, the Bible will not tell you on most occasions of what the culture is. You are going to now have to find other material to give you what the culture is so that you can get a better understanding of the scripture. So applying the word then, brethren, like I've been saying, is not going to be easy. You know, it's going to take some work. And except you are willing to do the work, you will be like a chaff that when the wind comes, it blows you away. Amen, Virgin. So not everyone will need all these materials though. Because like I said, there are some Virgin. That is why you have some that preach and some teach, Right? Because not everyone will be able to dig deep in the word as some others. For some others, the, the Lord, there's a calling, there's a, there's a push, there is something that is inside of them that will cause them to do this. But for others, they are willing to sit down and listen to the teachers, listen to the preachers, and then they will take that, analyze it, and apply it to their spirit. So God, so God have his way of of, of getting to everybody. But for those of us who are able to, you know, at least a subject or a character, we can try and study in the view of applying what is learned to our life that we might be the individuals that God wants us to be. So not everyone will need these material, but as children of God, surely we should look in depth in certain scriptures, you know, to give an account for ourselves. So, you know, as, as, as I mentioned this, you something drop in my spirit. I want us to know that there are times in your life, in our life, when we go through difficulties and God have a way of talking to us through the scriptures. Can we just read the one passage and we read a passage and we say, yes, God, give me a word. But how does that word apply? What is that word really saying? God, give us a scripture, you know. But we, we, we just run with the scripture and we don't look at what is happening behind the scripture. Amen. So you want to be able to... to Analyze the Holy Ghost. You're going through a rough time, and the Holy Ghost puts something in your spirit. Put a put a scripture, right? Because He will bring to your remembrance what you have studied. So He put a scripture in your mind, and the scripture is in your mind, and you want to be able to look at the scripture and to see how it fits you. It fits your situation. He you wants to see how it, you know, it is applied to you, and then yes, you can leave having all faith in God, saying that, look here, God truly give me a word, and this is what the word means to me as an individual. As an individual. So the next thing that we need to do, 
So we need to read. We need to study. And we say study is different from reading. And then now we need to memorize. So the third step is memorizing. Right? So it is not possible to memorize the entire Bible. Unless you are somebody like a brother Brown that can quote scriptures. You know, you get a gift that you can quote scriptures. But it is not possible. But what I'm saying to us is that we, there are certain scriptures that we need to memorize. So, so back from the, the previous, we said that we should be able to give an answer to every man that asks. So for example, a scripture like, you know, Acts 2 verse 38. We should put that scripture to memory because at least we know that from the scripture, the scripture tells us that persons need to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for their remission of sin, right? So we, we will not be able to remember the, 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 the entire Bible, but there are certain key scriptures that we need to study, that we need to take at heart and memorize, right? To, to hide, if we are going to hide the word in our hearts, we have first got to memorize. Memorizing scripture produces within us a well from which we may continually drink, especially at times when we are not able to read our Bibles. And sometimes in presentation, because who knows that the, the scriptures that you, you, you study, you spend the time and study, when you come to present a word, you are able to know quote from that scripture without having, having a text in front of you. Sometimes it might not be verbatim, but at least you can quote the essence and you know what the scripture says. In the same way that we store up money and other earthly possessions for the future, we should lay up these words in our hearts. Memorizing. What God has said will help us to know him more and will help us to live his way as he requires. And this will lead us to benefits, like we said earlier on, in terms of blessings. Most importantly, importantly when we memorize the words, memorize the passages, it brings us in connection with our Savior. How often do we push aside memorizing because it is too difficult or time consuming? We should have a plan for the scriptures, for scripture verses we would like to memorize. The truth is, that there are certain scriptures that will mean more to us than others. And we want to put a plan where we memorize the scripture. And sometimes, you know, we can, we can put forth a plan where we memorize scripture, a scripture every week. So, you know, you can get your flashcard and you can write them down. You know, for me, when I write a thing, I can remember it. If I say it, I, I tend not to remember. But if I write it one time or if I write it two times, the thing sticks with me. <clears throat> so what we want to do then as individuals, we want to give a little time, a little, a little of our time to studying, to memorizing. Why? So that we can get closer to God. So we can find a little time from the time that we spend watching television. Some folks from there sit before the television. It's hard for them. They can't sleep and it's hard for them to move. And, you know, from one show to the next. Some folks, when they have on the social media, it's hard for them to break. But you want to be able to give a little bit of time to memorize. This is how we are going to apply the word of God to our life. We are going to read it. We are going to study it. We are going to memorize it.
So we can do it as a family. We can have our family come together and we can, you know, do scriptures, different scriptures, and we can study the scriptures together so that we can know it. Right? But studying the scriptures, meditating on the scriptures, right? It, it is important, you know, for us to do. Memorizing the scripture, it is important for us to do if we are going to apply the scriptures to our life. So reading alone will not satisfy. Studying alone will not, in terms of, you know, understanding with Greek. You know, I, 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 I watch, you know, a YouTube presentation the other day. There's a park in, in, in New York where you have Muslim, you have Christians, you have different, different people. And these men, some of these men, they know the, the Quran. Some of these men, they know the Bible and they are able, some folks are able to quote from the Bible and able to quote from the Quran at the same time. And you will be amazed when I look around and say, man, these, these men, you know, have good memory. You know, but they spend the time to study because, you know, this, this park is a park that they go to debate, you know. And, you know, Christians debate with, 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 with Muslims, you know. But they, 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 when you look at how these guys study and they remember, I mean, it amazes you. So, so, so we must memorize. Then the next thing that we need to do now is to meditate. Meditate. To read without reflecting is like eating without digesting. And this quote is from Edmund Burke. Right? So he's a philosopher and he's a writer. And he said to read without reflecting is like eating without digesting. When you eat your food, you know, mommy used to say, sit down, man. Don't run up and down. You just eat. Sit down and let the food digest before you you know, run up and down, you know, because sometimes you will feel nausea, sometimes you, know, you will vomit if you run up and down before the food is digest. And you want, brethren, as you read the word of God, oh, bless the name of Jesus, to sit now and to meditate upon the word of God. If you are going to apply it, you have got to meditate upon it. In the parable, it's found in Matthew chapter 13. In the parable of the sower, Jesus tells of the sower who goes out to sow a seed, to sow seeds in his field. Only to find out that some seeds did not come. Or sometimes the seeds sprang up. He said in the passage, let us find it. He said Matthew chapter 13. He said that some seed had fallen on rocky ground. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he saw some seed fell by the way, wayside, and, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness in the earth. So what I'm trying to say to us, Bridget, even before I read the next passage, you don't want to be a Christian where the seed which is the word, when it, when, when, when it comes forth, right, and you hear it, you read it, it, it now have no root, no deepness, you know, go down in your heart. And because of that, it is not down there. The adversary will come. And he will tell you all kind of things. The wind will blow. And you will be blown away because you have no root. But let us just look back a little bit. 
and the tree that is planted by the water, that root goes way down, you know. So when you look even at the, the wind that blew last week, a lot of the trees that were on stony ground, they blew down because the root cannot get to go deep down in the ground where it, you know, it hold up. But for the trees, some of the trees, I have a mango tree in my house, not even a limb break off the mango tree. Some leaves come off, but not even a limb because the tree is way down in the ground. And some trees topple over because of the wind. So you don't want to be a Christian virgin. That the, 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 the word is not deep down. So listen, he says, verse 5, he says, Some fell upon stony places where they had not much root, for it for they sprang up because they had no deepness in the earth. Verse 6. And when the sun was up, they were scorched. Oh, glory to God. They're not by the water where they can draw from the water. So when the sun come up, them say, yes, my leaves still. You, you ever see a tree yet? You ever see a tree yet where? You try it because last year I went to Dembe. I always try to go there and, and I purchased, you know, an orange tree. And I tell you that, you see, if a couple days pass and I don't water the orange tree, you see the leaves, them start you know, full up. So I have to make sure that every day or every other day I give it some water. Because it's not by the place where water is. So that if I'm not careful, so the other day I was missing for, 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 for a week. And when I come back, every leaf dry up off that orange tree. But I saw that the stalk was still green. So I started water it, watering it again. And, and, and as I said that, so I want you to know, Virgin, that you might be in a place where your stalk is drying up because you're not at the source. You're not at the, the place where God wants you to be. But you can now start watering your soul by getting back into the word. So the sun scorched. The sun scorched because they had no root. They withered away. Verse 7. And some fell on thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. Verse 8. But others fell on good ground bridging. You want when you read the word, you want when you read the word, your heart, because really the Bible here is talking about the heart of the different people. This be, your heart might be tough like stone. And so the word fall on it. And it don't accomplish. But you want your heart to be in a place. That when it fall. You hear the word. You read the word. You meditate upon the word. It come on good ground. Where it brings forth fruit. Some an hundred fold. Some sixty fold. Some thirty fold. Just like we said in Psalms, you can go back to the slide. Just like we said in Psalms chapter 1, verse 2, right? He said, the man that meditates upon the word is blessed. Next slide. So Donald S. Whitney, in his book on spiritual disciplines, for the Christian life, right? The tree of your spiritual life strives best with meditation because it helps you absorb the water of God's word. So you want to meditate upon the word of God. Merely reading is good, but it's not enough. If we desire the word to take root in our lives so that we produce a harvest that pleases God, we must ponder, we must reflect, we must meditate. 
on what we read and study in the Bible. As we meditate, these are some of the things that we can ask ourselves. One, what does this passage teach me about God? Remember I said earlier on, you know, that, the, that why we read is really to learn about God. Because he is what we are trying to emulate. We are trying to emulate the man Christ Jesus. Who was God manifested in the flesh. Right? So we're trying to emulate him. And the only way we are going to do that is by reading the passage. What does the passage teach me about God? Ask this question when you read it. What does the passage teach me about God? Number two. What does the passage teach me about the church? Because I am the church. I'm a part of a body that is called the church. What does the passage teach me about the church? That should be number four. What does the passage teach me about the world? Because you want to be able to identify, right, what the world is like. So that you don't be like the world. So we're talking about applying the word, you know. When you know what the world it looks like, you know what the world does, you don't want to do the same thing. Because you want to be different. So what does the passage teach me about the church? Church live and behave a particular way. The world live and behave a particular way. What does the passage tell me about the church? What does it tell me about the world? Questions that we should ask, you know. Number four, what does the passage teach me about myself? And about my own desires and motive. If my Desire and my motive is not to please God. We will have difficulties in terms of pleasing God. Number five, next slide. Does the passage require me to take action? If so, what action should I take? These are things that we need to ask as we read because you want to be able to do what the scripture says. So as you meditate, this is what you want to do you know, because you want to do what the scripture says. What action should I take? Because if we read without and, and study and meditate without asking ourselves these questions, it is going to be futile because we will not get to, to accomplish what God wants to accomplish in us. So what do I need to confess and repent of? Number six. So when we read the word, what do I need to confess or repent of? Number seven, what have I learned from this passage that will help me to focus on God and strive for his glory? Because it's not about us. It is about him. So when we ask these selves, when we ask ourselves these questions, one of the things that we do is to put our desire, put our motive, aside in an effort to please God. If we truly want to get to the stage of applying, we must ask these questions. We will not get to apply it unless we ask these questions. The degree, next slide, the degree to which we study, memorize, and meditate on God's word, is the degree to which we understand how it applies to our life. But understanding how the word apply is not enough. We must actually apply it. So we read, we study, we know. 
but we're not applying it. That is not enough. We need to now move to the stage where we apply the word of God. The passage in James chapter 1, verse 22 that we read, but be ye doers of the word, O oh glory, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. We're not, when we, we could know the word, you know, like Paul. But if we're not applying it, we're not deceiving anybody else but ourselves. This is what the scripture say. It said, be ye doers and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. Application implies action. What action are we willing to take as individuals just so that we are able to apply the word? Application takes obedience. Are we willing to be obedient to what God says? As we try to apply the word of God to our lives, I want us to know that we are not alone in trying to understand and to apply God's word, God's word, God's word to our lives. God has filled us with the Holy Spirit. So I want us to understand that even though I said that it, you know, it is not so easy, I want you to understand that God has filled us with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Right? John 14, 16, and 17. He has filled us with the baptism of the Holy Ghost so that we have an aid, we have a friend, we have a comforter, we have someone inside of us that will help us with the application of the word. It will help us, he will help us with the application of the word to our lives. He said, when, he said I pray the Father, this is, John 14, 16. He said, I pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit, verse 17, even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but he knoweth him, for he dwelleth with you, and he shall be in you. So, this spirit that God placed in us is an aid to help us to apply the word of God. Because sometimes the real conviction, brethren, comes from the Holy Ghost, who is now coupled with our conscience. And when the, the whole, when the Holy Ghost receive it and prick our conscience, this is how we get the real conviction. And we say, God, trust me, I'm not going to do this thing again. I'm not going to do this thing again. Because you are now convicted. The same spirit in John 16, verse 13, him say, the same spirit which says, speak to us, leading us. And guiding us in all truth. So the same Holy Ghost that the Bible said that will lead us and guide us in all truth. Is the same spirit that will help us to apply the word of God. Paul instructs believers in Galatians 5 verse 16. Paul instructs believers to walk by the spirit. He said walk in the spirit that you might not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So the same spirit that will help us to apply the word. It is the same spirit that Paul is saying that we should walk in. Right? And then in Psalms 41 verse 6. For he is a very present help. The same spirit, you know. That will help us to apply. Have you ever found yourself in some situation where if it was not for the intervention of the Holy Ghost, you would fall? The same spirit that will help us to apply the word. Who better, we can go back to the slide, who better to teach us 
how to live according to all that is written in the Bible than the one who inspired it, the Holy Spirit. Therefore, let us do our part by hiding the word of God in our hearts and obeying the Holy Spirit as he draws that word out, out of us, so to speak, in terms of us being examples. How do we apply the word? How do we apply the word? By reading it, by studying it, by meditating upon it. And we try our best to apply it. Like we said, application. Application implies action. And if we are going to apply the word of God to our lives, we have got to take some action. Next slide. As we try to apply the word, brethren, there are times when we will falter. I want us to know that we are not perfect. None of us is perfect. And as we try, we're not, we, we try as best as we can, but we will falter. And as we falter, the thing that we must do is to pick up ourselves. Pick up ourselves and get back to the place where we continue trying. For the Bible, in Proverbs 24, verse 16, it says, For a righteous man falls seven times and rises again, but the wicked stumble in times of calamity. So because we're not, being, we're not perfect, we will fall. But then now we have got to find a purpose to apply the scripture. We have got to find the purpose to live. And what purpose, what greater purpose I can find to live than the purpose of him first loving me. He first loved me and shed his blood for me. So there must be a cause. Because all I had to offer him was sin. All I had to offer him was sin. So there must be a purpose. And then we must find, find a way to commit ourselves to living. Why should I commit myself to living? Because he is coming back again. He is coming back again. And because he's coming back again, I must commit myself to applying the word so that I can live. And number three, because I'm not perfect, I have to be willing to make the sacrifice. So what kind of sacrifice am I willing to make in order to apply the word? The things that I would, I would try to do them not. For even though there's a law, Paul says, that is present in me, there are some things that I know that I must deny myself of. So when we apply the word, we're talking about, we're talking about reading it, meditating upon it, studying it, applying it, so that you know, we can get to please God. So when we talk about application, I want you to know that you know, it, it, it is... It is in every aspect of our life. Because the Bible says, when we talk about applying, you know, the Bible says, repent and be baptized, every one of you. So application means that we are going to know, do what the scripture says. Repent and be baptized, every one of us, in Jesus' name. So that is what we talk about. Applying the word, you read it, you study it, you know why you're supposed to apply it, and then you apply it. 
right? The next thing that we can look at, the Bible says, you know, um, be anxious for nothing. Next slide. But it said, be anxious for nothing. All right, so it, it, the next slide has it. It says, when we apply, we do as the word instruct, right? So if the word said, be ye holy, this is what we are going to do now. How do we know what holiness is then? Because if we are going to know, apply it. We must know what holiness is, which means now we go back now to the steps and we now begin to read about what holiness, what the Bible says about holiness. Now, in our age, the age of information, we can now book, go on the internet and say, what does the Bible say about holiness? And you get a whole lot of scriptures to read. Now, after you read it, some of them, you, you study it. After you study it, you meditate upon it, you analyze it. Jesus. And then now, you begin to know, implement it, be ye holy, which means no. So if the Bible talks about the dressing, I am now going to see what the Bible says about dressing as it pertains to holiness, and I am going to carry myself that way. So that is why I said earlier on, that as some folks, you cannot look on and know that there is no application of the word. They hear it, they read it, but they're not applying it. And that is the problem that we have today as saints. We want to be able to apply the word of God. Amen, Virgin. The next scripture that, you know, the Bible talks about, love your neighbor. The next thing the Bible says, love. Oh, how do I love my neighbor? We have to again go to the Bible, read the Bible. What does the Bible say? Love your neighbor as you love yourself. And we read what the script, we study it, and we apply it, we implement it. So if we, if we again, Virgin, if we find ourselves having art against our neighbor, we're not applying the word. Oh, Jesus, we're not applying. The, if we find ourselves having heart with our neighbors, we're not applying. We're hearing, we're reading. We play the Bible verses on our phone, but we're not applying. The next one is a be anxious for nothing. Some folks, them anxious. Them can't wait. They, they don't have any patience. But the Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but with everything, with prayer and thanksgiving, make your supplication be known unto God. So what we have to do now, do what the Bible says. Pray about it. Fast about it. And then believe God that God is going to do the rest. Finally, bridging, be ye doers of the word and not hearers, hearers only, deceiving your own self. Bridging, we want to be doers of the word and we want to take the word of God and apply it to our lives. I believe a lot of time that we struggle, a lot of time we become impatient, a lot of time we err. It is because we read it, we hear it, but we do not apply it. And I want to implore us tonight, Virgin, that if we are going to please God, has all God really desire us to please him, then we have to take the steps in applying the word. We have got to live the word. We have got to have a, a, a worldview from the perspective of the word, where everything to us is about the word. The word govern us. The word help us to, to live it, 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 it dictates how we conduct ourselves. 
Bridget, I, I, there are things that I'm working on, you know. There are things that I'm currently working on, and I'm, and you see the thing that when you, when you decide that you're going to work on this thing, thing does come up, some things just come up in front of you, you know. And you have to know, remind yourself that, yes, God, I'm in the process of applying. It's not easy, you know. It's not easy. But yes, God, I'm in the process of applying. And you have to tell yourself, self, I'm in the process of applying. Because I want to please God. You know, as I close, my, my mind go back to, you know, David. He says, thy word have I hid in my heart. That, I am, that man was obsessed. He was, he was desirous of, you know, knowing God, having a relationship with God. And so, you know, as you go through some of the Psalms that were written by him, you see, you know, him talking about the laws and the precepts and the statutes, you know, talking about the word of God and how he, you know, the word of God is a lamp unto his feet and a light unto his path. Bridget, I encourage us as we look at the power of the word that we make sure that we apply the word to our life, that we don't just be hearers of the word, but we be doers of the word. God bless you tonight in the name of the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we <clears throat> bless your name one more time. We give you honor. We thank you for the word that you know, went forth. We pray, God, that you will again accomplish with it what you set out to accomplish. We pray, God, for the household of faith tonight, that we be doers of the word, that we will take the necessary steps to apply the word of God to our lives, that we might be better individuals, better Christians, that when we go to and from, we will hear, there goes a child of God. We thank you for your love and your mercies one more time. Let your will be done as we dismiss tonight. Dismiss us with your choicest blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. God richly bless you tonight. Continue to live for the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen.